next on Martha. We're Twittering, Facebooking, and surfing Yahoo. It's a big part of our lives, social networking. Now the biggest names behind these inventions go face-to-face -face with you. Co-founders of Twitter and Facebook, Biz Stone and Chris Hughes. Yahoo expert Heather Cabot with some exciting Yahoo news. And New York Times tech guru David Pogue with the 411 on how technology has drastically changed. It's the Tech Show, next on Martha. During the show, we've been talking about all of the great social networking sites we love to use. But with so many sites to visit every day, you can find yourself spending a lot of time navigating the web. There are ways to spend your time online wisely and make life easier. And here to tell us uh, more about this is Yahoo's web life editor, Heather Cabot. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Nice Thank you. So and, uh, so what does a web life editor do? It is the coolest job I bet. ever. Did you make it up? You know, well, Yahoo made it up for oh. me, actually. So um, I'm actually a mom of three-year-old twins, and um, I'm, I'm sort of a wired mom. I get to uh, talk about digital trends and get to talk about what's new with Yahoo and uh, at the same time be home with my kids during the day. So oh, that's fantastic. fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so tell us, um, tell us what we're going to do right now. Well, um, how, can we, how can I consolidate all my... All the places I want to go to on a, on a daily basis, and so it's easy, easy right. access. All of us really need to be able to, to streamline right. our time online. And so one of the really cool things that Yahoo has done with our new homepage is we've made it really easy to make your homepage yours. So what I mean by that is that you can actually personalize your page. So we have yours right here. We've logged in as you, and we've created... Um, a Martha Stewart homepage. So here we have some of your favorites. So perhaps maybe when you log on to Yahoo, you're checking your email. Well, when you do that, as soon as you go to Yahoo, you can look at your blog. You can so it's all listed here on the side? It's listed here on the oh, side. Okay. You can actually customize the um, layout of the page as well and the color too if you want, if that's something that you're interested in. So say you don't want to see you know, the news headlines at Popper, maybe you do. You can move that around and you can change the color too. But what I really want to show you is how you add various sites to your home page so that okay. as soon as you log on, it's there for you. Okay. Um, so if you want, we can actually add a site. I can show you how easy it is like to do Fandango. it. Fandango. Okay. Let's do that one. I love to go to the movies. Okay. Now remember, I may need that uh, spell check here because I'm not a great typist. <laughs> okay. So here we go. You just add it. Do you all use Fandango? Yeah, they do. I use it. And there it is. Okay. And you can move it around too. If you don't want to have Fandango right there, you can, you, yeah. know, you can move it around. But um, I know you're very excited about social media and you use oh, it a yes. lot. And so that's another way that you can really streamline your time is that you can actually get your social media updates from your homepage. It's very easy. Yeah. It's very easy. Sorry, I just moved over to business news. But the other thing that you can do is you can actually get your social media updates within your mail. So if you're already going to mail, and most Yahoo users, that's why they're going to Yahoo, is they're using our mail. Um, in fact, most people online, that is the reason that they go online first is to use email. So we can go over to um, your inbox, and you see when we pull it up, take a second, we have your updates. See, there's my tweet about being oh, on your show today. Oh, yes. There you are. And so as soon as you get to your inbox, you can see this What's New tab, and we can see what's new. And then you go to your inbox, and you have your email there. Now, what about editing photos? Because that I, I love to edit photos. Me too. And the thing is, it does take a lot of time. Yeah. Usually if you get it in an email, right, you have to download it, and then you have to right. resize it or do whatever you want while you're on your, um, you know, on your hard drive right here. But what you can do when you're using uh, Yahoo in, uh, email is you, there's an edit photos tab right in here. And what this does is it pulls every image from your email into a gallery. So you have them right here. Oh, it's going to take good. a second to yeah. load. Um, but for example, like say you had a party and someone, you know, multiple guests sent you photos, you'd be able to see it in one gallery so right you here. So click on those emails and then they click? No, oh, it's, the, the, it's actually loading it for you oh, right it now. Yeah, it does it automatically. And what we're going to be able to do after this loads is you can actually choose one of the photos from your gallery and you can resize it, you can change the color. Oh, look. So let's pick out, I don't know if you want to pick one oh, yeah, this from your is a, photo library. From this from weekend, um, Ev Williams, who is one of the co-founders of Twitter, mm -hmm. and his wife Sarah and I in front of the beautiful Aspen Mountains. It's gorgeous. So, yeah, so I think we have to maybe sharpen it a little bit. Okay. Okay. On that. Oh, look, already. And then you can, you see that? You just yeah, drag that just over, see. and that'll help you sharpen the image a little bit. Oh, yeah, that looks better already. Ooh, that's great. Okay. okay. So then you'd hit OK. Say OK. And then I can do other things, too? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, the colors should be brightened up a little bit. Saturation, let's see. 
Uh, oh, oh, yeah, look, that green looks grass. nice. Look at that green yeah. grass. Yeah, that looks terrific. <laughs> I like that. And temperature, no, we're going to, mm, sort of right there is good. Okay, so they hit That's okay. Okay. And then let's see, resize. Can we make it bigger? Sure. Okay. Enter a width, or how do you enter a width or height? You could just put it in, in there. Oh, 1600. You by can 12. use percentages or. Okay, use percentages. Okay, let's do. Okay. See, that kind of looks the same. Yeah, that's. How about. Okay. Well, or how about you could even crop it cropping? a little bit? Let's crop yeah, it, take I'll it in a little it. bit, maybe. Okay. No. I like it this taller and thinner. Yeah. And it's so great that you can do it while you're already in your email. You don't have to take oh, the time to do this. it somewhere else. Oh, I know, taking it out. See, that, that sort of looks better. Okay. okay, so let's do okay. Okay. And then all you want to do if you want to share it, so you want to send it to someone, you want to post it on Flickr. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Yeah, it's really easy. And, um, you know, at the, especially because you spend so much time on Facebook, you can also right. post it to Facebook as well. Right. So. so is Yahoo doing more and more and more uh, upgrades to the site so that we can... Throughout, yeah. throughout. And, I, I, you know, whether it's search, whether it's um, email, obviously the homepage that we talked about. So all, you know, what we're trying to do is make everything that you do when you come to Yahoo more relevant to your life so that you feel like you don't have to navigate around all the time. It's right there for right. you. Organize your life. Mm -hmm in an easy, usable fashion, yes. practical, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Heather. And Heather's thank going you. to come back with our other guests uh, to take audience questions. Stay tuned. Today's guest, and you can, as you can see, the audience is tweeting and blogging and emailing, and they're going crazy with their Blackberries and their computers, and who, who knows what else they have, and their cell phones probably. And um, my guests are going to take questions from our audience. I'm sure you all have a lot of questions to ask our tech experts. So uh, raise your hand and identify yourself, please. Okay. Hello, I'm Marika. I'm from Mount Kisco, New York, and my question is for Chris. Um, I wanted to know how can I get the most out of Facebook with maintaining a sense of privacy? Um, do you recommend any particular settings? Yeah, absolutely. So the thing that's unique about Facebook is that it's a place where you connect with your real friends and with your real family. And once you do that, you also have complete and total control over what information you're sharing and who sees it. So privacy settings have been there since the very beginning. And the, the idea is that, you know, Every now and then, there's some pieces of content that you'd like some people to see. Like, for instance, if you have, uh, if your kids have a birthday party and you take photos, you might not want to share that with your coworkers. So you can say, this photo album, just my family, just my friends. Yeah. Or if you're doing, uh, you know, something else at work and you're organizing an event, you can say, this is just for people at work. So Facebook has privacy settings that really give users complete control over, over what they share and how they share it. Okay, thank you. But users have to uh, understand what these controls are because so many young people I read about now um, post something on their Facebook that's embarrassing later on. They can't get jobs. They're eliminated from job uh, uh, searches. And it's sort of unfair in a way, but they've done it to themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's, you know, people are going to be people. And so, you know, what I say to people when they ask me, you know, what should I post, what shouldn't I post, is just... Common Use your sense. best judgment. Right. You know, like most of the time you have a good idea if something is a little out of line or not. And so, so save those do it nude photographs of yourself um, for, for some other use, right? <laughs> yes, I would, I, I would recommend that. <laughs> Another question? Oh, hi. Hi, my name is Daryl. I'm from New York. My question is for Biz. How did you choose 140 characters and not 130 or 150? Because sometimes I need a few extra characters for my tweets. <laughs> Uh, we chose 140 characters because the limit on text messaging worldwide is 160 characters. And like I said earlier to Martha, we always wanted the service to be able to work seamlessly across uh, both PCs and mobile phones because we think some of the most interesting things that are going on in the world obviously are away from your computer. So we need to work really well with text messaging. And we needed some room, though. We needed more, a little less than 160 characters because we needed room for your name in front to see that you wrote it. So we decided to standardize on 140. And now, since then, I've become obsessed with this number 140. I see it everywhere. It's, everywhere. Like, it's like some kind of weird indie film. <laughs> Great. Another question?
Hi, my name is Ginger Clark. I'm from Dahlonega, Georgia, and this question is for David. How do you see this new technology affecting our students in the classroom? It's funny about the next generation. I heard a PTA mom saying the other night, I asked my daughter, how come you're not answering my email, honey? And the daughter replied, mom, nobody does email anymore. Uh, people don't do email anymore. People don't leave messages on phones anymore. The next generation has a very different sense of urgency. That's why it's all about Twitter and chat and text messaging. What's oh, yeah. the average? 2,000 text messages a month? Boy. It all has to be instantaneous. And I, I hear a lot of, you know, our generation say, oh, it's too bad. They're losing the ability to craft and create long form. But you know what? That's been going on forever. You know, imagine the parents of the caveman who invented fire. You know, oh, there goes the next generation, and they're not like us, you know. So there will always be change, but in the end, it's always just communication. Yeah, I just had a thought about spell check on Twitter. Then we, how are you going to check an abbreviation? And everybody's using abbreviations. That's true. You might go crazy with spell check. Forget it. All right. <laughs> we'll take that um, one in the water. <laughs> Um, Heather, this question is for you. My name is Kate. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm also a mommy blogger. I have a blog called richmondmom.com, but you're on a large national scale, so what marketing tips could you offer a local or a smaller blogger? Well, the first thing that I would say is that you don't have to spend a lot of money on search engine optimization, this SEO stuff that everybody talks about. I think that through social media, for example, you can promote what you're doing so easily, and it doesn't cost anything. But the other thing that I would um, suggest is to think about syndicating some of your writing in places that get a lot of eyeballs. So for example, on Yahoo, we have a women's hub called shine.yahoo.com, and you can actually create a profile for yourself and post some of your writing up there with a link back to your blog. So that's tons of eyeballs that you wouldn't normally get, but in doing that, you're, you're creating visibility for yourself. And again, it's, it's free. Great. Well, those are great questions, and thank you very much for your valuable information. We'll be right back. A very special thanks to all of our guests for being here. And on Monday's show, it's time to unplug and experience nature with an hour dedicated to the great outdoors as I embark on a spectacular trip to scenic Montana. Watch Monday and don't forget to follow me on Twitter and you could win a trip to New York City to see my show live. We'll see you then and have a great weekend, everybody.